The SureStep intermittent catheter tray from BARD is designed to aid the practitioner in maintaining sterile technique during a straight catheterization by providing everything you will need in an organized space that is labeled with each step for insertion. The SureStep straight catheter is also connected to a drainage bag, making it a closed system, which is different from straight cath kits that have been used at St. Mary Mercy Hospital in the past. These aspects ensure a minimal risk for developing a cauti or catheter-associated urinary tract infection. At St. Mary Mercy Livonia, straight intermittent catheterization may be ordered by a physician, but a physician order is not necessary. By reviewing the urine catheter decision tree, which is available on the units and through Policy Manager, you can easily view the straight intermittent catheterization, or SIC, guidelines. After removal of a Foley catheter, if a patient is unable to void within four to six hours and bladder scans reveal retention of greater than 300 milliliters of urine, it is appropriate for the nurse to initiate the use of intermittent straight catheterization to relieve retention. When you have identified the need for a straight catheterization, you'll need to gather the supplies. You'll need the SureStep intermittent catheter tray and clean gloves. There are sterile gloves provided in the kit, but you may want to bring appropriately sized sterile gloves as well. And if a urine sample is ordered, you will need to bring the vacutainer adapter and the gray top, marble top, and white top specimen tubes. Like all barred kits, to easily open it, put your finger under the green arrow and pull up. The cover sheet shows the size of the catheter. 16 and 18 French catheters are provided in the pod rooms with this kit. Other sizes are available if ordered from distribution, but will not come included with a SureStep kit. After removing the cover, the first item you see is a Ziploc bag that says, Stop! Cleanse the periurethral area first. So, before advancing any further, take the time now to perform pericare on the patient with wipes provided in the bag. For women, cleanse the far labia with one wipe, wiping from front to back, then the near labia in the same fashion with a separate wipe, and then use the third wipe to cleanse between the labia, always wiping from front to back with a single wipe before discarding that wipe. For men, Begin at the urethral meatus at the tip of the penis. Wipe in a circular motion, advancing toward the scrotum. Use all three wipes, cleaning about a third of the area with each wipe. Remove your gloves. Also provided in the peri cleaning bag is a small single-use Purell packet. Use that to wash your hands before advancing any further. Now you will see directions for use. You can use these to guide your insertion. Next is the tray. It is sterilely packaged and is wrapped and sealed by a tape. On that tape is the next step, which is to place the kit between the patient's legs, oriented with the arrow pointing toward the patient. Once placed, open the kit and continue to follow the instructions on the tape. Don sterile gloves. They are the next item in the package. Place the under pad. This drape should be placed under the patient's legs, up against their buttocks. This pad is sterile and will provide you with additional sterile field. But be careful that your hands do not touch the patient's skin while placing this pad. One way of accomplishing this is to wrap the corners of the pad around your hands and use that as a protective barrier between your sterile hands and the patient. If you do touch the patient, your glove is no longer sterile. You can don a new pair of sterile gloves if you have them with you and continue with the insertion. Place the fenestrated drape. This drape has a hole in the center. The hole should be positioned over the insertion site. This is also a sterile drape and provides additional sterile field that will completely surround the insertion site. With the drapes in place, the rest of the items of the kit are now visible. On the tray, you will see numbered steps to insertion. Follow these steps in order. 1. Open the iodine. When you remove the iodine packet, you see number 2, which is to pour it on the provided swabs. Do that now. Step 3 is to dispense the lube. You can use the syringe to apply lubricant directly to the tip of the catheter. But my preferred method of lubricating the catheter is to remove the plunger from the back of the syringe and place the tip in the syringe itself. This helps keep the catheter contained and on the tray, because sometimes the rigid tubing will cause it to fall off of the tray and out of the sterile field. This keeps it more secure. Steps 4, 5, and 6 can be found below the catheter. It says to retract the genitals with your non-dominant hand, prep the patient with the swabs with your dominant hand, and to insert the catheter. The iodine should be applied to the patient in the same method that the pericare was performed. Your non-dominant hand is holding the non-sterile genitals in place for disinfection, so that hand is no longer sterile. Your dominant hand is applying the iodine to the insertion site, and thanks to the long-handled applicators, this hand should not come in contact with the patient, and thus will remain sterile. Only your dominant sterile hand should touch any of the remaining sterile supplies, namely the catheter itself. 
With that sterile, dominant hand, insert the tip of the catheter into the urethral meatus. Continue to advance. When you reach the bladder, you should see urine flowing into the catheter and the drainage bag. Hold the catheter in place while the bladder drains. You may need to advance a bit further to ensure the tip remains in the bladder. Urine will drain into the collection bag. This bag holds approximately 1,000 milliliters of urine. If you bladder scanned your patient prior to catheterization, you will have a good idea of how much urine will be drained. When the flow of urine has stopped, remove the catheter. If this catheterization was done due to urinary retention, you will likely need to do a post-void bladder scan, sometimes immediately following the straight cath, or within four hours, or if the patient is symptomatic for retention. If there is an order for a urine sample, either a urinalysis or a urine culture, you will need the gray top culture tube, the marble top urinalysis tube, and the white top tube, as well as a vacutainer adapter. All of these can be found in the pod rooms. There is a needleless port on the spout below the bag. This is where the sample will be collected. Begin by cleaning the port with alcohol or chlorohexidine for 30 seconds. Then attach the vacutainer adapter. Now you will fill the tubes with urine. Regardless of if the order is for a UA, urine culture, or both, you will always fill all three of these tubes and send them to the lab. The lab will hold the urine in the event that further testing is ordered. Always fill the tubes in the same order, gray, then marble, then white. To fill the tube, first make sure the drainage bag is suspended with the spout facing down so urine is draining toward the port. Then push the desired tube into the vacutainer adapter. Push it down so that the needle in the adapter penetrates the tube. The vacuum in the tube will cause the urine in the bag to be pulled into the tube. When the urine stops filling the tube, remove it and fill the next tube. With your sample collected, you can now drain the urine into the toilet. Go to the toilet and turn the green spout counterclockwise to open it. Allow the urine to drain into the toilet. Flush it and dispose of the collection bag. This is a one-time use item. It is disposed of when finished. The SureStep intermittent catheter tray is designed to improve sterile technique while performing a straight catheterization on a patient. This will protect patients from the development of catheter-associated urinary tract infections related to the catheter insertion and the closed system with needleless sample port will minimize the risk of contamination of urine samples, which will lead to a more accurate and appropriate treatment of our patients.